Big thank you to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to start your own website. Thank you, Squarespace. I've been making videos for almost three years. We have over 800 videos, which is a lot of comments when you think about it. Some videos get hundreds. Some videos get thousands of comments. So I have seen many absurd ideas in the comments section. I'm gonna talk about a few of them today. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about some of the preposterous ideas that some audiophiles think are true. If you are new here, if you're watching me for the first time, I apologize. But seriously, subscribe. Why? Because we're getting close to 200,000 subscribers. And when we hit 200,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away a whole bunch of stuff. Speakers from Wharfdale, speakers from SVS, speakers from Q Acoustics, amplifiers from SVS, subwoofers from RSL, turntables from U-Turn, turntables from Project, streamers from Weem, streamers from Cambridge Audio, DAX from Cambridge Audio, Dax from Giselli Labs. Tube amp from Black Ice Audio. There's more, a lot more. The only thing you have to do to enter is subscribe. Fill out the Google form right here. Also gonna be linked in the description and the pinned comment. And then follow me on Instagram. That's it. So thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing. If you've ever considered starting your own website, if you have a business or you're just an individual or you're a water bottle sticker enthusiast, then you should run on over to squarespace.com and see if water bottle sticker enthusiast.com is available. You want to get it before somebody else does. But seriously, it's never been a better time to start a website because it's super easy. The only thing that you have to do, go to squarespace.com slash cheap audio man, use the code cheap audio man to get 10% off your first order. <gasps> And then type a few things in about yourself or your business and Squarespace is going to give you dozens of different templates to use. Then the only thing that you have to do is drag and drop your own pictures, double click on the text box and fill out whatever you want to about yourself or your website. Penguin water bottle sticker enthusiast.net may be available. You should check it out because you can reserve all your domains on squarespace.com. If you're worried or intimidated about building a website, don't worry about it. Why? Because Squarespace has a awesome help section, which includes videos, step-by-step -step articles to get you going. If you want to open your own store, sell some stuff online, sell some vintage twist ties. It could be a huge market, burgeoning market, antique twist ties twisty ties. You can do email campaigns. You can send out a newsletter. There's all sorts of things that you can do with Squarespace and it's super easy and affordable. So go to squarespace.com slash cheap audio man. Use the code cheap audio man at checkout and get 10% off your first order. Thank you, Squarespace. First absurd thing that I've seen over and over again in the comments is that all DACs sound the same. And if you didn't know, a DAC stands for Digital to Analog Converter. Our phones, our computers, our tablets, all TVs all have DACs in them. What they're doing is they're taking digital signals and they're changing them into an analog signal because when sound comes out of your television, it's actually analog sound going into a speaker. When you're on a Zoom call and the sound is coming out of the speakers on your tablet or your computer laptop, it's got a digital to analog converter in it. A lot of audiophiles, a lot of people into hi-fi get new DACs. Good DACs don't have to be expensive. This is the SU-1 from SMSL. It's about $80. Do, 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 do. And it sounds amazing. But some people get in the comments and say all DACs sound the same. And I couldn't disagree with it more. I think the people that say all DACs sound the same haven't listened to enough DACs or their mindless automatons parroting what other people have said in positions of influence. If you think all DACs sound the same, do me a favor. Go get yourself an Amazon Echo Link. Run the 3.5 millimeter cable out of that into an amplifier, powered speakers, or anything else that has an analog input. Listen to some Amazon music, and then get one of these SMSL SU1s. Hook it up to the same analog input. Play the same music from Amazon Music. By the way, you can get a free Amazon Music trial if you just go to the link in the description. I get a couple of bucks if you sign up, so thank you. Anyway, listen to some Amazon Music through this into the same analog input, and then tell me that all DACs sound the same because the Amazon Echo Link has a 3.5 millimeter output, 
which means you can hook it up to powered speakers or anything else that has an analog input. And it sounds terrible, muffled, covered up, mm, lack of detail. Why? Because it's got a really bad DAC. But more importantly, it's probably got a really bad analog output section. And that, my friends, is where the true difference in DACs comes into play. Analog output sections. I don't think very many people think all amps sound the same, although that's gonna be the next topic. We accept wholeheartedly that preamps sound different, amps sound different, different cartridges sound different, different tubes sound different. But yet somehow we think every DAC sounds the same. Not everybody, some people. So I would challenge you, if that is what you think, go get yourself a Topping E30 or E30 Mark II and then get yourself a Gishelli Labs AKM J2 and compare and contrast the sound and then come back and tell me if they sound the same. Doesn't it make, and it's just absurd to think that people think all DACs sound the same when you have so many different variables in the analog output section alone. Not to mention the different chips, not to mention how that chip was implemented because people can implement chips differently. Anyway, I digress, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> amplifiers sound the same I've heard this one before and I was really shocked that some people actually think that all amplifiers sound the same for instance the crown drive core it's a pro audio kind of prosumer audio equipment class D it's actually really powerful and has a lot of useful features like clipping and all sorts of cool stuff like it doesn't clip it has a clipping indicator it would be really bad if your amp had a feature that it clipped all the time that's not a feature that's gonna blow up your speakers. Anyway, some people think all amps sound the same. So, what I would challenge you to do, go get yourself a Fozzy Audio V3. One of these fine, affordable amplifiers from Fozzy Audio comes in about $80. And then you can get a Fozzy Audio TB10D, which is another decent amplifier, comes in around $60. And then play things through them, hook them up to the same speakers with the same DAC and the same source. And then tell me that these amplifiers don't sound different. Well, you may say that's just on cheap stuff. The Fozzy Audio V3 is marginally more expensive, has a little bit better components in it. So yeah, it's gonna sound better. Go listen to a Marantz and then go listen to an IOTA VX. Tell me they don't sound different. Go listen to a tube amp and then go listen to a Class D amp and tell me they don't sound different. Even Class D amps all sound different. There is an integrated amp from Bucard, which is full and lush and really voluptuous. It draws you in. It's a very cool, warm sounding amplifier and it has class D output modules. So to say that all amplifiers sound the same is pretty dumb. Dumb, it's dumb. This one's gonna ruffle some feathers. Crossover components don't matter. They don't matter. They all sound the same. What? So even with crossover components, there's like a minimum grade of audiophile component that people will put into a speaker. You can still get resistors and capacitors and other stuff that are really low tier. They cost pennies to put in, but people don't use those. Why don't they? If they have the same measurements, they should sound the same, correct? Well, there is some things. Let's take inductors, for instance. Inductors are often on the crossover circuit for your woofer. It starts a low pass filter. Actually, if you just throw an inductor in there, that's a first order low pass filter. Point being is you can use iron core inductors, you can use air core inductors, you can use air core inductors that have a higher gauge of wire and they will sound better. Why? Because there's certain inherent characteristics about inductors called ESR basically resistance. Smaller gauge wire actually has a higher resistance. So it actually changes the level of the base. So by simply getting a better inductor, air core inductor that has a lower ESR, you can actually increase the base in your speakers and oftentimes increase the clarity in the base. So if all components sound the same, why is there a minimum level of components used in speakers? And then why do more expensive speakers oftentimes use better crossover components? Well, because it makes a difference. And anybody that says it doesn't make a difference, it's dumb. Dumb. All speakers should measure exactly the same. They should have a flat frequency response, okay? This is kind of a pervasive idea in audio. Now, I think within 
a certain extent it is true because you don't want a 17 dB rise at 500 hertz and then it goes to a 12 dB trough at a thousand hertz where vocals are. So obviously there are certain things the speaker should adhere to when it comes to a frequency response, right? But to say that all speakers should have a flat linear response, which means no frequency is overly exaggerated or overly cut is completely stupid. Let's say Klipsch, for example. Klipsch does not adhere to a flat frequency response. And guess what the most popular speaker out there is? It's Klipsch. Now, one could argue that, well, those people aren't audiophiles. Really? The heresy certainly isn't flat. K-horns, all that stuff, all the heritage stuff is not a flat frequency response. There's significant peaks, especially in the upper mid-range, to something like the RP600M. Significant dips in the mid-range on things like the RP6000F, 8000F. And guess what? Sounds pretty good. We all have different hearing. I just took a hearing test on some new wireless IEMs. It kind of turned out how I thought it was going to turn out because I do have some upper higher level frequency loss, hearing loss in the higher frequencies. Grew up on a farm, served on submarines, went to some rock shows. Now I do protect my ears when I go to a rock show and you should too if you go to a concert. But the takeaway is as we age, our hearing degrades a little bit. So for me, a speaker that has a little bit of a rise above 8K, so 4K, 6K, 6K, 8K, and above, very pleasant to me because I'm hearing things in the music I don't hear on a flat speaker or a speaker that has a rolled off top end. Since we are all individuals and we all have different hearing, why should we all have the same frequency response? It's absurd. I don't want to pick on anybody because there are websites, there are reviewers, there's other people out there that basically judge a speaker, not just on its frequency response, but the majority of the judgment of a speaker is done on the frequency response. That's like saying we should all have the same chocolate cake. This is the best chocolate cake. Some people like devil's food. Some people like milk chocolate. Some people like dark chocolate. Doesn't mean they're wrong. Doesn't mean the cake industry is wrong for offering a variety of flavors of chocolate. It means that they know there's customers out there who may like something a little bit different. Sometimes the speaker's just bad because maybe it has a bunch of box resonance or something, but it's affecting covering up certain frequencies and certain things that have a huge dip in the mid-range or bloated bass that covers up vocal clarity or clarity within acoustic guitars and things like that, I don't pr particularly like, but some people really love a warm speaker, which again, isn't neutral, isn't a flat speaker. So I don't think we can just look at it from a scientific standpoint or a measurement standpoint. I also don't think we can look at it specifically from a personal preference or subjective standpoint. I think there's some middle ground. There should be some science in here, especially with box resonance. But as far as frequency responses go, there is not a one size that fits all. There's not a perfect speaker and there's not a perfect frequency response. If you think so, you're dumb. Dumb. People are gonna get so mad at this. Pretty much everything I'm talking about today comes down to contempt prior to investigation, or in many cases, pure laziness. It's easy to hide behind a certain point of view when one is unwilling to actually explore different points of view. It's safe, we feel comfortable, because then we can look at other people and say they're wrong and we're right and then feel superior to them. And oftentimes people will just continue to double down on their opinion by hanging out with other people that have their same opinion. Maybe their opinion is right, but oftentimes it's wrong, especially when one feels that everybody else is wrong and they are right. That's pretty much a good indication that actually you're wrong and other people are right. The truth is in the middle. So if one is taking a very dogmatic approach to their belief system, then they're probably wrong. I never really thought speaker cables or interconnect cables made a difference or power cables or anything like that. That's not been my experience. I have heard differences in cables. Not to the point where I'm gonna run out and spend $10,000 or $2,000 or even $1,000 on cables, but I do think good quality cables, like entry-level stuff from AudioQuest, quality cables from, um, uh, what is it? World's best, I almost said America's best cables. Actually, someone should get that. World's best cables, I think are good. Having a Furman power conditioner is probably not a bad idea. And people will lose their mind over that type of stuff. 
So I guess the point of this video is just to take everything with a bit of a grain of salt. And just because you read something or just because you hear something over and over and over again doesn't mean it's true. I think personally that everybody should have their own unique experience. You can watch me and maybe you trust me and trust my judgment when it comes to a review, but nothing replaces personal experience. That's why you should be the reviewer when it comes to buying equipment. If you can, get some equipment in and compare it to your old equipment and then make up your own mind. But don't go into my comments and junk it up with saying that all DACs sound the same because that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I've heard dozens of DACs, 50, maybe even 100 DACs. And while some do sound similar, the majority of them don't. So you may not like this. You may think I'm calling your kid ugly. You may think I'm calling you dumb. But this video isn't really meant to insult anybody. It's really just to get people to think for themselves and not be a mindless automaton parroting what other people have said. Have your own experiences and enjoy them. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio. Every Sunday night, we have patron only Zooms, patron only Discord, patron only Facebook group. You can use some of the links in the description, which are affiliate links, which means if you click and you buy, I get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more, so it's a great way to support the channel. You can buy me a cup of coffee. Down at the bottom of the video, there's a thanks button. Give me a buck or two, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything. You can sign up for Tidal, Amazon Music, or Rune. Links in the description. If you sign up, even for a trial, and you quit, I still get a couple of bucks. So, don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Think outside of the box. Consider other people's perspectives. And maybe, just maybe, you'll find that that DAC does make a difference. So go binge listen and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Chief Audio Man.